Well, imagine this. It's a glorious summer day. Now, maybe not today, but it's a glorious summer day in Humboldt County, and, and we have those days, don't we? We have those glorious summer days when the sun is shining and the breeze is blowing just right. And imagine this, a boat on Humboldt Bay, tied up to the dock, still tied up, but it's a glorious day, and all hands come on deck, and they unfurl the ropes, and the boat slowly begins to go out into the bay. And then with a rush of a mighty wind, that boat is off and sailing, off and sailing to new and wondrous places. The boat pulls away from the dock, no longer just a hunk of wood, a hunk of fiberglass. It is new, it is renewed, it is a living thing as it moves across the water with the wind billowing in its sails. All hands are, are on deck are expected. They are instant of that marvelous thing that happens. As the boat has become a thing of grace and beauty, there's a sense of exhilaration on board, a sense of energetic excitement, catching the wind, being powered by the wind. Can you feel that excitement? Can you feel the wind billowing through the sails? Can you feel the, the movement through the water? Can you catch? Can you catch the spirit of that day? This is how I picture that first Pentecost. Disciples are gathered together. And they're gathered together, but but they're like they're still tied up to the dock. They aren't yet. They aren't yet energized for, for the mission that Christ has prepared them for. And then suddenly, like a rush of a mighty wind, the Holy Spirit fills the room. And like the wind on the sea, the Holy Spirit blows through their lives and fills them with their very power of the Spirit, with the very power of the Spirit of God. It's like sails catching the wind. The disciples catch the Spirit, and with a rush of excitement, a rush of renewed energy, they move out. They journey to new places, to unexpected places. They move out with great excitement. They catch the spirit, and their lives are transformed. Their lives are renewed in, in new and wondrous ways. And so it is, too, with us, too, that we catch the spirit. We, too, are renewed by the Holy Spirit coming into our lives. You might say, that as disciples of Christ, we are called to live wind-blown, catching the Spirit, and moving out to new places. Pentecost calls us to, to open ourselves, to, to unfurl our sails, to catch the Spirit, to not stay safely tied up to the dock. Pentecost calls us to open ourselves to, to the wind-like quality of the Holy Spirit. And like, like the wind, the Spirit can surprise us. It can move us along on a frantic pace. It can take us to somewhere we never dreamt of before, to new and wonderful adventures. New and wonderful adventures of faithful adventures. It can also take us to safe harbors, to places of, of security, places where we can be sheltered by God. 
lead us to that safety of God's still waters. At first Pentecost, the Holy Spirit came into that room like the rush of a mighty wind. And it stirred up in, in Peter a holy boldness. Now he goes out, empowered by the Spirit, Peter goes out into the public square and he preaches to the mass of people in that public square. And that day, he baptizes 3,000 people. A few of us are like Peter. Very few, very, very few are like Peter. Peter was like that mighty, mighty sailing ship, the Cuddy Sark, that could set all new records of 17 knots per hour. I guess that's redundant, but 17 knots as, as it carried massive loads of, of tea and, and other goods from England to the New World. Few of us are like Peter, the Cuddy Sark. For honest with ourselves, most of us are like more like sunfish, aren't we? Little sailing boats, maybe a little fishing boat that we see on the bay. But still, we have the same thing in common. Whether, whether we be a small, small fishing boat, or even a sunfish on the bay, or whether we be a mighty cutting star, a mighty sailing ship, a four-masted schooner, we have the same thing in common. That's the Holy Spirit that powers us, that sends us out. Luke doesn't give us the, the names of the uh, other disciples that are there that day. We don't know the names of the rest. But I'm pretty sure there might have been Philip was there. And you may recall the, the story of Philip in chapter 8 of Acts. Philip meets the Ethiopian on the road. And one on one, he tells the story. And he interprets scripture for that Ethiopian. And he is baptized. Most of us are more like Philip, aren't we? Where we might not go out and preach the 3,000, but we do meet one-on-one -on -one with people. And one by one, we too are proclaiming the gospel. I think it's probably likely that, that Stephen was there, and maybe even Dorcas was there. Now Stephen was one of the first deacons in other words, he was somebody like, like Deacon Mara, who's called to word and service, is called to go out in the community and to be able to, to feed the poor. There are some that are called to do that. Maybe in a public role as a deacon, like Stephen. And there are others like Dorcas. Dorcas is fairly unknown in scriptures, although her story is also in Acts. Darkness worked behind the scenes, and she cared for the widow, and she cared also that she made clothing for those who were in need, for the widows of her community. There are many unnamed disciples over the years but what keeps us all together is the same Holy Spirit that fills our lives and sends us out to proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ. So what does that mean for us 21st century disciples? Well, first thing, I think the first thing of this story is that the Holy Spirit descends upon the disciples in the midst of a gathering, of an assembly on Sunday morning, the first day of the week. They are assembled together, they are gathered together. And in that midst, the Holy Spirit descends upon them. Now I know this is very countercultural, because we sometimes talk in our, in our culture 
that it's, it's the hermit's away, or, or it's in silent meditation, or it's in silent contemplation that we are filled with the spirit, that, that spirituality is, is, is a personal thing. But this story shows a spirituality that the Holy Spirit comes in the midst of a gathering, in the midst of assembly. Not one-on-one -on -one people, but in the midst of the assembly. That's why we do this unique and peculiar thing we do on Sunday morning. It's unique and peculiar that here in this place we gather on Sunday mornings. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. Be nourished with the sacrament. To be here God's word. It's here, gathered today, that we feel the rush of a mighty wind. So what do we do now? Having been empowered by the Holy Spirit, what is it? What is it that we do now? Well, I'm going to suggest to you one thing. <clears throat> Look around. I have pews. Look around. Think about somebody, maybe somebody you haven't seen in a while sitting in these pews. When we talked about this Thursday night when we were at our, at our renewal and revitalization meeting. Look around. Who isn't sitting here? Who maybe just needs a phone call or a visit where you can go? And listen with the ear of your heart. Listen to them with the ear of your heart. And maybe invite them to come. <coughs> maybe find out if they need a ride. Invite them. Be with them in that midst. Tell them they are missed from this assembly. You don't have to be like Peter be able to bring people in. Each and every one of us can do that. The second thing I think that, that the Holy Spirit, that this, this story tells us about how the Holy Spirit works, it works in individual lives in many and varied ways. Not all are called to preach like Peter. Rarely is one so gifted. But God who works through each of us, every one of us, in individual ways, we hear the story of Jesus in our own language. We are called to God and empowered by the Holy Spirit to fulfill our baptismal, our baptismal call. That's one of the truly amazing things about this church about this congregation. We did a little work on that on Thursday night, and Diana's going to talk a little bit more about it. We talked about what was in our tool shed for ministry. And we found out that we have people that teach, we have people that mow the lawn, visit the sick, make crafts, make decisions, wash the, wash the floors, bake goods, we have a variety of tools. We have emotional involvement. We have spiritual involvement. We have people with liturgical knowledge. We have people with technological knowledge. We have a really big tool shed that we have been given. And that each one of us, in the midst of this, we're empowered by the Holy Spirit. We're empowered to work out our baptismal calls. It's a glorious day. Can you picture it? Open your hearts to the coming of the Holy Spirit and catch that spirit. Jesus loves you, always has, always will. And that, my brothers and sisters, is very good news indeed. Amen. Oh,